Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Wayne County Sheriff Benny Napoleon answering our questions tonight about how he spends his campaign cash. All right, Sean, but first, an employee at an assisted living facility is accused of assaulting an Alzheimer's patient. Police say it may have happened so he could steal her jewelry. Now, Stacy Mercer of Detroit facing elder abuse charges for the attack on the 69 year old woman with Alzheimer's happened last month at the villa at Green Lake Estates in West Bloomfield. Last uh, this was last month. Larry Spruill now with the newest information on the arrest. Larry. Yeah, Devin, police say they found out about the allegations after the woman's husband went to go check on her. And tonight that suspect is in custody. He is denying the allegations, but police say they have a lot of proof. Tonight, this man, 31 year old Stacy Terrell Mercer, is in trouble for allegations of elderly abuse in the fourth degree and unarmed robbery. Police say Mercer was an employee here at the Villa at Green Lake Estates in West Bloomfield, where he allegedly abused a 69 year old woman and stole her wedding ring off her finger. Her husband told police on July 15th he noticed a contusion above her right eye and scratches around her ring finger. Found out that the incident itself actually happened on July 11th at a local nursing home here within West Bloomfield. Our detectives began the investigation. Uh, they determined pretty quickly who the suspect was. They obtained video from the facility itself and they actually watched as the individual on several occasions tried to remove the ring from our victim's finger and in doing so, uh, roughed up our victim and allegedly caused uh, injuries to her finger. Deputy Chief Curtis Lawson with West Bloomfield Police showed us these photos of the bruised hand. Lawson tells me Mercer is an employee at the nursing home. He worked there for the last two years. From what we saw on the video, we could only see where allegedly that the, the scratches occurred from him trying to remove mm -hmm. the, the ring from her finger. She's had that ring since 1969, and my understanding is it hasn't come off of her finger very much. And I did reach out to the nursing home. I asked for an interview or a statement, and they released this statement. It says, in part, administration at Green Lake Estates immediately cooperated with the West Bloomfield Police and partnered with them to facilitate his arrest on July 21st, 2020. He was not allowed to provide patient care after the allegations were brought to the attention of Villa at Green Lake. Now, Villa at Green Lake Estates will continue to cooperate fully with West Bloomfield Police. Villa, Villa does not tolerate any form of abuse, including theft or attempted theft of company, property, or property of any employee, patient, or visitor. We are live in West Bloomfield tonight. Larry Spruill, Local 4. All right, Larry. Now let's move to Decision 2020. Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris just made their first campaign appearance together. Came just a day after Biden announced that he had picked the California senator as his running mate. And this morning, all across the nation, little girls woke up, especially little black and brown girls, who so often feel overlooked and undervalued in their communities. But today, today, just maybe, they're seeing themselves for the first time in a new way as the stuff of president and vice presidents. All across this country, a whole new generation of children is growing up hearing the cries for justice and the chance of hope on which I was raised. It was a big announcement, not punctuated by applause. The two spoke in a high school gym in Biden's hometown of Wilmington, Delaware, and no crowd, of course, because of the pandemic. There's the new normal in politics for now. Let's get to breaking news out of Washington. President Trump holding a briefing at the White House. He is uh, taken back to daily briefings. Let's listen in for a bit. We had over 9 million, substantially more than 9 million jobs. So those are incredible numbers about our economy and how it's coming back. It's coming back very strongly. It's coming back at a level that's far greater than anybody anticipated. And we're very proud of that. And I give a lot of credit to all of our people, Steve and Larry, and uh, we'll be uh, talking about it. If you have any questions on it, I, don't, I shouldn't have any questions. Uh, I didn't. I didn't print those charts. Who did the economy journal? And let's see. I don't know. We'll find that out for you. But it wasn't us. We took those. We took those numbers from 
somebody. Where President did you get Trump this talking answer? about uh, jobs numbers, uh, the employment picture, interesting contrast with what, if you were with us a little short time ago, with what uh, both Joe Biden and Kamala Harris had to say about the current state of the economy, and therein lies the part of the rub as we move toward the campaign. We'll continue to stream this on ClickOnDetroit.com and an update coming up on NBC Nightly News at 6.30. Thousands on nice hotels, Lions tickets, steak dinners. A new report is calling into question the campaign expenses of Wayne County Sheriff Benny Napoleon. Tonight, Napoleon defending his spending. Local 4 defender Sean Lay spoke to him uh, as he tries to explain some of the more unusual expenses. Sean. The state's campaign finance watchdog says he has never seen campaign funds spent like this before. Tonight, we're asking the sheriff about his spending, and tonight, he is answering. With 45 years in law enforcement, uh, I have a voice that I think people respect and should hear, and I have an opinion that may be different. Wayne County Sheriff Benny Napoleon is also an attorney. He says he's traveling and speaking regarding criminal justice reform, and he says that led to $4,700 in campaign cash being spent hosting sheriffs at a dinner in D.C. Oh, yeah, it would have been several people there, a lot of people. The sheriff says he never lets anyone buy him dinner or golf, but the dinners and golf are work or campaign related, people who want time with him. But what about spending $1,500 at Bed Bath & Beyond? That's predominantly coffee that I buy for my office, on which I get 20% off by going to Bed Bath & Beyond and using a coupon. $27,000 for Lions tickets. I give those uh, seats to uh, people who support uh, my efforts to uh, keep my office uh, to seniors. I donate them to different uh, organizations. If in fact, uh, people call and ask me for a donation to help them raise funds for a charity, I give those seats away. He says money spent at a Chicago strip club was by a staffer who was there for dinner and a meeting. It's incredible to me that folks complain when elected officials like me take things free but then you complain when I pay for it. I just don't understand that. The law states these funds can be spent on campaign or work-related activities, nothing personal. We asked the sheriff what jumps off his spreadsheet that he'll take another look at. He says absolutely nothing. Sean Lake, Local 4. All right, Sean, let me quickly mention uh, that was uh, first brought to light uh, in a Metro Times investigation, those expenditures. Yeah. A Wayne County judge is now under investigation for making inappropriate comments during a murder trial. And this is not the first time Circuit Court Judge Bruce Morrow has found himself in trouble with the Judicial Tenure Commission. It authorized this most recent complaint. Our Rod Maloney has the story. Here is the JTC complaint, and it has three different counts. The first two are inappropriate use of sexually graphic language. The third is questioning female attorneys who appeared before him about their physical appearance. And in all of this, the JTC says it's conduct unbecoming and improper for a sitting judge. 68-year-old Judge Bruce Morrow has long been a fixture of Detroit's Third Circuit Criminal Court. And it was Prosecutor Kim Worthy's office that filed the original complaint from two different unidentified female prosecutors listed as APAs A and B. They claim Judge Morrow made it a habit of speaking in unwelcome sexual tones. In the first incident, the complaint says the judge said this about a prosecutor's cross-examination of a medical examiner, quote, that the climax of sex is akin to getting the medical examiner to state the cause and manner of death after getting the details of his examination of the body, end quote. Then he said, quote, you want to lead them to the climax of the manner and cause of death, end quote. The complaint says respondent's discussion, meaning Judge Morrow's, with APAA caused her to feel frozen and afraid to move. The second count is so sexually explicit we'll not even include it here. For the third count, it claims respondent asked APAA whether she weighed 115 pounds. And after she responded, we don't know how, the judge is alleged to have said, well, I haven't assessed your muscle mass yet, end quote. The prosecutor's claim of the judge, quote, while respondent was having this conversation with APAs A and B, he was overtly eyeing both of their bodies, end quote. So repeatedly today, Local 4 reached out to the judge and his attorney to try and get their side of the story. We received no reply. In the interim, the judge has 14 days to file an official response to this complaint. Thereafter, the JTC is going to appoint a special master, and that special master will do an investigation and decide whether hearings are necessary. Rod Maloney, Local 4.
All right, Rod, back in 2014, Judge Morrow received a 60-day suspension from the bench in a 10-count judicial tenure case. The Supreme Court said at the time the judge was unable to separate the authority of the judicial office he holds from his personal convictions. All right, now to the latest on the coronavirus in Michigan and a sign some hospitals are concerned about the state's increase in cases. Beaumont Hospital's Farmington Hills campus announced it will implement a no visitor policy starting tomorrow. The hospital says it's making the move out of an abundance of caution because of a recent rise in cases there. Today, the state reported another 515 new cases, nine more deaths. Our total case count nearing 90,000 in the state of Michigan. And the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference voted to suspend all sports until 2021. That's a conference that includes eight Michigan colleges, including Wayne State, Grand Valley State, and Saginaw State. COVID-19 continues to have ripple effects in areas of medicine beyond the obvious, and two newly published reports highlight that. Dr. Frank McGeorge joins us live with those details. Doc? Yeah, Kim, pediatric vaccination rates in the U.S. have fallen sharply since the start of the pandemic. Well, now a new poll further supports that fear of the coronavirus is keeping parents from getting their children's routine vaccinations, even though they recognize their importance. The National Survey by Orlando Health shows 84% of parents think vaccines are the best way to prevent infectious disease, but two-thirds are still nervous to take their kids to the pediatrician's office to get those vaccines. The survey also found that skepticism about vaccines is also still a major issue, with 38% of parents responding that they don't believe their child needs all the vaccines recommended by their pediatrician. Experts fear that if vaccine rates continue to fall, we will lose our herd immunity, allowing preventable illnesses to resurge. Now, a report published in the Journal of Pediatrics by emergency physicians in Colorado found a threefold increase in dog bites since COVID-19 stay-at-home orders were enacted, and the increase has persisted even after restrictions were lifted. The reason behind the increased biting was thought to be from several factors. More child-dog exposure because of stay-at-home orders. Greater dog stress from children at home more and additional household stress. And decreased adult supervision because of competing home responsibilities for parents and caregivers. Now, they really wanted to point out the warning because children, especially those age 5 to 9, have the highest incidence of dog bites. And infants and younger children have higher likelihoods of bites to the head and neck area. Now, importantly, most dog bites occur from the family dog or another dog that is known to the person. Uh, I'm curious, Doc, you, you mentioned that dogs might be more stressed because of overall anxiety in the household. Yeah, you know, that's another unforeseen consequence of the pandemic that some have actually termed emotional contagion, hmm. basically where a companion dog mirrors the emotions and stress level of their human caregivers, which of course has been very high in many households. Yeah. Back to you. Indeed. Interesting. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Interesting indeed. All right, we've got much more to come ahead here at 6. Let's check in with Ben. Still toasty out there, guys, but the humidity is the big story. And over the next few days, weather having a very low impact on us, not so much Sunday. We'll tell you what to expect then. Next. Imagine having your whole online life hijacked by someone trying to scam people. Well, that's exactly what happened to one man and his family. His frustrations and his apologies coming up. Thursday, superintendents, parents, teachers come together to talk candidly about the challenging school year ahead. Join Devin Skillian and Paula Tutman for a special live streamed event, Education for All Town Hall. Thursday at 7 on Click on Detroit.